All right, all right, that's enough. Enough? What? We're introing the effect. What's the problem? It's too much. That was way too much. Okay, so we just gonna show them how to- Let's say you need a string of random letters and numbers. How would you do it? You'd need a list of all possible letters and numbers and a way to select one at random. Once you can select one, you can repeat that step as many times as you need. When you have enough letters, you could place them in a box. You could take it a step further by generating a new random string every time the user moves the mouse. The result would look something like this. Now here's where things get interesting. I didn't actually know how to do what comes next, but I can show you what I learned. Imagine you have an image. You can place a mask on that image in a number of different ways, but masks aren't limited to just shapes. They can even be a gradient, and what you're masking doesn't even have to be a picture. You could, in theory, even use text. Now let's say you have another image sitting on top of a plain color. There are a number of different ways to blend the colors of that image with the color behind it. But what if that image was instead another gradient, and the thing you were blending it onto was your text? Remember, however, that this is text you've already masked with a completely separate gradient. Blending the colors on top isn't even the best part, because you can modify the position of your mask to follow the position of your mouse. And now we run it back. It started with a letter, a random letter that turned into a random string. That random string was placed in a box and told to change every time the user moved the mouse. A gradient mask was placed on top, the position of which was told to move along with the mouse. The colors of a completely separate gradient were blended into the entire thing, and all of this was done so that when a user hovers over one of the items on Evervault's customer page, they would see exactly what you see here. 